Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vikhyat Kalra. Uh, this work uh, I did as a master's student at the Ohio State University uh, in Simulation and Innovation Center. Uh, I, along with uh, my colleague Isaman, will uh, today present this work. Uh, and my advisor uh, was Puneet J. Tulpule. Uh, so, and thank you to the SUMO conference for accepting our work. So I'll start with the background uh, for this particular work. So the College of Engineering at Ohio State University is working to develop um, a digital twin model for the OSU campus, which will have multiple subsystem models like energy, economics, mobility, human behavior, trash, and communication. The focus of this particular work was uh, uh, on the mobility aspect of that. And this particular uh, uh, test platform will uh, help uh, in replacing cabs, which are like the campus area bus shuttles with autonomous shuttles or EV. Uh, so the key objective of our work was uh, to create a calibrated traffic simulation scenario for the Ohio State University campus, and then develop a hardware in loop simulation platform with traffic model in the loop. So uh, we divided this into like three different levels. So higher level was use a calibrated open source simulation uh, model for OSU campus, analyze the issues in the available data so that we can help the data collection team to modify the data collection algorithms and approaches. And uh, at the lower level was develop microscopic traffic simulation model calibration using the available data. Uh, so agenda for this presentation would be, I will explain the data sources, then the calibration of microscopic traffic simulation using those data sources. And uh, my colleague uh, will explain you what we did for the traffic in loop simulation framework with DSpace Hillbench. Uh, so uh, for the data source, we had, as we'll start with the network, uh, then the cabs, cabs is the local, uh, buses inside the OSU campus, then the traffic count and traffic signal. Uh, so uh, we selected a section of the uh, OSU campus, which was Woody Hayes Drive and use OSM uh, OpenStreetMaps to get the network uh, for the SUMO. Uh, the data for the cabs was collected between 2010 to 2000. Actually, it's, uh, uh, gets collected real time, but we focused on 2010 to 2019 because COVID disturbed the traffic movement a lot. And it was provided to us by traffic transportation and management department at OSU campus. Uh, we also use traffic count data at intersection, which was uh, collected between 2nd April and 23rd March of 2019. And we had a 15 minute frequency interval for the data. Uh, the traffic light phase and actual durations were also implemented in SUMO for real representation of the traffic light. Um, so the network was completely uh, divided into 12 short sections and travel time for the cabs GPS data was used uh, as a reference to understand what is the density of the traffic based on the travel time. And we had five signalized intersection in our network. Uh, now coming on to the cabs GPS data. So we had uh, we have predefined cab route with fixed frequency. So we got the traffic flow data using those uh, frequency uh, frequency of the cabs movement. Uh, now this uh, this slides presents uh, the uh, simple algorithm logic that we use for the travel time calculation. Uh, so we divided uh, the complete network into 12 sections. So you will see there are like reference points, left reference and right reference because the GPS logging was not very accurate. We used uh, like a 30 meter circle of near the reference point to calculate that, uh, calculate the GPS timestamp and then calculate the average velocity. Using that average velocity, we calculate the average travel time for our particular sections. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, the delta distribution between time sem. So there was a lot of inconsistency in the logging data, and you can see uh, the, a lot of outliers from the median. So many times GPS was not logged properly 
so that created issues in terms of calculating the travel time so that's why we have to use like a larger uh, circle of radius to calculate from the reference point the turn ratios uh, uh, were used as a probability to calculate uh, for how the vehicles uh, are turning statistically at a particular intersection so for example you can see uh, at this particular in this particular figure uh, if 100 vehicles are coming like 30 are going towards left 50 going straight and 20 towards the right so this is a snapshot of uh, count data that we used and then converted those into turn ratios uh, and from the analysis we observed that cars and buses are the most frequent uh, vehicle types that we have to care about in our simulation so uh, the focus was mostly on cars and buses but we also added pedestrians uh, as a statistical measure to uh, understand how pedestrian influence pedestrian flow influence the traffic flow at, at a particular intersection uh, so uh, the traffic signals that we had were uh, two types uh, one was fixed phase uh, their durations were coordinated and uh, mostly uh, uh, the data was directly implemented into sumo so there was an offset to uh, get a green waving from west to east direction and so the fifth one was camera uh, vehicle detection base so same thing was implemented using event detectors in uh, in the sumo simulation uh, so now coming on to the calibration setup uh, from osm uh, we have to do a lot of corrections because i think the us data is still not under like completely accurate we had to add using a, a tool called JSM and satellite imagery, the turn lanes and other things so that uh, the, our network map represent the actual uh, lane structures for, for the network, for the OSU campus. Uh, we use JTR router for the demand algorithm and vehicle generation were at the entry points of the network. Uh, we have the optimization function using PMRE that I will explain in later slides. And we use genetic algorithm as an optimization algorithm to calibrate uh, the simulation network. Uh, so as I was explaining, uh, so the process was to use OSM and then uh, put that map into JSM and superimpose using Bing's uh, aerial imagery and add different lanes which are uh, which should be there for the, for the, for the particular network, and. Uh, in net added, we added E3 detectors as entry points and exit points, which are very similar to the uh, data we used for CAP GPS travel time. So we are trying to match the sections of uh, simulation network to the uh, actual network we have from the CAP GPS data. This figure just represents how we added different turn lanes because of incorrect data in OSM. Uh, so in our network, we had 12 entry points. The entry points marked with stars uh, were not considered in the optimization because they had like very few vehicle generations from them and the remaining nine entry points are considered as in the optimization problem. Uh, so we, uh, as uh, Sumo community knows, we have like multiple kind of algorithms you can use to generate traffic. We went with the JTR router route because we can use uh, uh, the count data as a probability of turn at the intersections and uh, and uh, at the entry points of the network we were using uh, we are using probability generation of the vehicles uh, as an optimization parameter and we for the cabs we have fixed route and generation frequency for flow so that also helps. Uh, the optimization function uh, that we uh, used uh, was uh, PMRE, which is the point mean relative error. So between the travel time observed from, from the actual data, it was compared with the simulation. And that, uh, the assumption was the simulated time uh, would be inversely proportional to the probability of vehicle generation. So if we have more vehicles, the travel time will increase. So just, just the probability uh, of simulation will be proportional to that. 
and for the cabs bus stop uh, average stop time was 20 seconds and for pedestrian because we don't have data so there was like a constant flow uh, of pedestrian at the intersections crossing and section length was small enough for comparable average travel time between cabs and passenger vehicles because there are no crossing lanes uh, like uh, the passenger vehicles can't uh, overtake cabs if they are in the path ahead so we consider the travel time to be very similar now uh, moving on to the genetic algorithm flow chart uh, uh, so initialization was done uh, using random set of flow parameter within specific bounds the, those bounds were like between 0 0.05 to 0 0.20 those were passed on to the simulator to run uh, sumo using uh, tracy and import generated data from by the sumo virtual detectors which were the ec detectors to get the travel time and then parallelly we injected the cab gps data calculated travel time to calculate the pmre values and then uh, we had the typical uh, ge genetic algorithm path and uh, we observed that uh, after 10 generations we are not getting any more improvements so we stopped the genetic algorithm at 10 generations uh, now you will uh, observe that uh, for number of sections still we had a some errors with respect to the calibration data and we observed that those errors were uh, because uh, we had some assumptions uh, in our simulation sim scenario, which could uh, be the reason for that. Like, like we don't have pedestrian data set and we don't uh, know that uh, the data logging from GPS was not pretty accurate. So I think those things can be improved if we have much better frequency of GPS data logging, not just from cabs, but from other vehicles as well. And uh, also if we can uh, have pedestrian count movements, which actually affect the travel time, uh, that will also improve the data accuracy. Uh, so this is just a small video of the calibrated scenario. Uh, now I will hand it over to uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Jacob Isaman. So he will explain to you traffic in loop simula simulation framework. Okay, so the traffic in the loop uh, framework was broken up into four sections here. Um, so the first section covers the EO vehicle for the um, D-Space automotive simulation model. Um, and then in the next section for the Sumo and ASM network, um, we cover the network mapping process for ASM and Sumo and the network information synchronization. Uh, then in the third section, we cover the communication interface. Uh, this uh, entails the ego vehicle information interface and the region of interest. And then lastly, uh, for the text, uh, test execution, we go over the asynchronous mode for SUMO and the ego vehicle path and the ego vehicle maneuver in traffic. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, this right here is the DSpace uh, ASM traffic model. Um, we had to edit this model so that it could take input from Sumo, but also so that we could extract the ego vehicle information um, from DSpace. Uh, so we had to edit the traffic block right here um, in order to accomplish that. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so, so for the Sumo network, we updated uh, the network uh, using NetEdit and exported it as an open drive file. Uh, this is because DSpace requires uh, op an open drive file to import the, uh, uh, the network. Um, and the, but the problem was that the open drive network lanes and road IDs don't match the Sumo network. So uh, we created a synchronization file using a Python script. And so the Python script essentially matches the uh, network lanes, roads, and junction IDs from Sumo. And the reason for doing this was because we needed to use the Tracy move to XY command. And Tracy, uh, that command requires the edge IDs and the lane IDs. So that's why that was necessary. Um, okay, so this is uh, the communication interface. So uh, the simulation update frequency for DSpace is 100 Hertz, while Sumo was updating at uh, 5 Hertz. So the simulation begins by sending um, the ego position, which is then received. Um, 
in Sumo, and this was built using a Python script. And Sumo, and once the ego position is sent, we can then obtain uh, the ROI, which is uh, the region of interest, which we define as the 10 closest vehicles to the ego. We then send uh, that those vehicles information back to uh, the hill uh, where those uh, positions and velocities are extrapolated uh, for the hill. So, so then, um, yeah. So, and the reason that we set the sumo uh, simulation stuff for 200 milliseconds was because it takes, uh, it can take up to 150 milliseconds uh, to, for sumo to step and to extract the ego vehicle information. And it can also take an additional, a, a, an additional 20 uh, milliseconds uh, to write the fellow positions and velocities. So here was our uh, extrapolation method. Um, this was all implemented inside of that traffic block in the DSpace ASM model. So uh, we integrate the acceleration with the velocity as the initial condition which gives us an extrapolated uh, velocity, which we then integrate with the position as um, the initial condition, which gives us an extrapolated position. And both of these integrators are reset um, every time Sumo writes new data information. And here on the right, you can see that uh, the blue is the uh, Sumo step. So you can see that it's missing information for 200, that 200 millisecond gap. So that's why the extrapolation is uh, necessary in order to make the simulation uh, run uh, correctly. And then here's just a quick little clip from the uh, co-simulation. Um, so we have a run with like an asynchronous mode, which um, allows Sumo to run, and then we can inject the ego vehicle into any time into the Sumo simulation. So you'll see it pauses and then um, and then it starts synchronizing, and then it'll, they both begin running. And so on the right, you'll see uh, the DSpace model desk view. So I'll pass it back to the kit. Uh, thanks, Jacob. So uh, uh, for, for the conclusion and future work, so uh, as our work was divided into two parts, so I'll explain from the calibration side. So we implemented a new method of calibration you, without using a traffic flow data, but we observe that there are some shortcomings to that, which can be improved uh, using a much better of, uh, GPS data collected from from the cabs and we applied a probabilistic uh, vehicle generation for randomness in traffic simulation. For the co-simulation, uh, we developed a communication framework for traffic and vehicle dynamics powertrain models, which gives uh, users a much more in interactive way of using hardware in loop benches uh, with, with the traffic simulator. And we implemented an information exchange between Sumo and Ego vehicle model in real time. So implemented that was the most challenging part uh, during the core simulation. So for the future work, uh, right now, uh, the team is trying to use the camera mounted on the traffic signals to get the traffic count data and like using higher frequency GPS logging for better route mapping uh, and maybe use traffic counts in the optimization algorithm for the calibration. Uh, once we are done with the calibration uh, using the flow generation, we can also start trying to calibrate the car following parameters because in this particular simulation framework, we use the cross model and did not modify any of the default parameters for that. For the co-simulation uh, in the hill framework, uh, the 3D rendered environment in the ASM uh, network can be put so that we, uh, we, had, we have more information and we can add uh, sensors model into our hill benches for the ego vehicle and like we can add V2X simulators like veins to simulate communication benefit for fuel efficiency and caps. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and